Greetings, I am Herbert Erbaderp, and today I'm going to build one of these Italian tanks. This is a 28mm or 156 scale plastic kit from Italery and Warlord. There is also a Warlord boxing of this kit available. The plastic should be the same in both boxes. This kit allows you to build one of four variants of this tank. The M1340 and the M1441 with the turret, and two versions of the Semoventi self-propelled gun, if I'm saying that right. Gun? Is that the word? But um tsh. The back of the box shows a side illustration of each variant that you can make. There's also an image of a built and painted version of the turreted tank and self-propelled vehicle. As you can see, the self-propelled version includes an interior, which I think is pretty cool. I'm not building that variant in this video though. Inside the box we find a pair of sprues moulded in a tan colour and wrapped in plastic. This should stop the parts from getting lost if they do happen to be knocked off the sprue somehow. There's also instructions and a set of decals, but we'll look at those in a bit. The plastic in this kit looks very good. This is a pretty new release, so I don't think it's unreasonable to expect this to be fairly good quality. And for the most part it is, particularly in the moulding. There are mould lines of course, but they're not that bad at all really, and shouldn't take too much work to clean up. I will say though that some of the engineering choices in this kit are a bit odd, and some of the parts don't seem to go together very easily, particularly around the turret. I can't speak of the Semoventi version though because, well, I didn't build it. That said, it's not the worst kit I've built, not by a long shot. The detail is pretty nice, there's a whole bunch of rivets and bits and pieces that are quite good and crisply moulded. They should make for a pretty good looking model and they'll catch paint and weathering when the time for painting comes around. The crew figure does look a little bit soft detail wise, particularly in the body, but it could really be worse. I don't plan on using the figure anyway. The rest of the parts look good, though you do have to keep in mind that this is a wargaming kit. It's not going to be hyper detailed or anything like that right out of the box, and it's not meant to be. It's meant to represent a vehicle on the gaming table and it's going to do that quite well. There's a decal sheet included and there's a lot of different markings here, though I couldn't tell you what any of them mean. But they're there and that's what matters. I've never had an issue using the decals included in these Italery boxed kits, so these should be fine. I haven't got it yet, but I expect the Warlord boxing has different decals and instructions. The instructions are pretty decent, and I like that they're in booklet form, I just find that makes them a bit easier to handle. The instructions themselves are broken down into fairly simple steps and the diagrams are easy to understand and follow. Optional parts and the different steps for various variants of the vehicle are marked, so it should be pretty hard to build the model incorrectly. The last couple of pages feature some basic painting and marking guides. These are, well, basic, but they can make for a good starting point. Now that we've seen what's in the box, it's time to start gluing bits of plastic together, starting at the beginning, which in this case is the track assemblies. I glue the sprockets into place at the front. This is keyed so the teeth will line up properly. As you can see, only the teeth that won't be contacting the tracks are visible. The idler wheels go onto the thin protrusion at the rear. You may find you need to nudge this just a little bit to get it to be nice and straight relative to the other wheels. The tracks come next. These have keying which fits into some slots in the wheels. I don't suppose it really matters if you put the upper or lower run on first, but either one needs to go on before you can put the end parts on. The end parts are different enough that you should be able to avoid putting the wrong one on the wrong end, and they go into place easily enough. I then add the top run of tracks which, like the bottom, has keying that fits into a couple of slots in the return rollers. To finish it I add the rear curved end piece. It's not difficult to do these, though you might need to do a little bit of nudging to get the parts to stay where they should. The result is pretty good looking tracks if you ask me. The benefit of these being multiple parts is that the tread detail is a little bit better than on some kits that have single piece track sets. Obviously there are two sets of these and once they're both together, it makes sense to then glue them onto the hull bottom. They go into place very easily, guided by the keying. I make sure to use plenty of glue and some pressure. One side did need a bit more pressure than the other to keep it together properly, but that's nothing too tricky and in the end it all went together how it should. I then glue this rear plate part into place. There's nothing to guide the positioning of this, so I just lined it up with the bottom of the hull, and that seemed about right to me. 
I guess you should also make sure that it lines up with the mount for the idler wheels as well. Once that's on, I add the top to that box thing. This isn't too difficult, but I did need to nudge it a bit so that it would sit inside the box part properly. Just make sure that you don't push it in too far. Next, this I guess it's a towing ring can be installed here. As you can see, it mounts into the two slots. There's nothing too mind-blowing here. Only a little bit mind-blowing. I then add the hull front parts. The curved transmission cover part pretty much drops right into place. A bit of extra glue on the inside should satisfy the glue god, for now. The upper front plate, I guess you would call it, comes next. This more or less just sits on top of the side parts up against the front part, and you'll need to nudge it a bit to get it in the centre where it should be. It's ended up looking pretty good, I think. Let's add some detail. This little shackle goes in the centre mount on the front of the hull. A little bit of nudging was needed, but it's not too hard to get into place. To either side of that there are hooks. It's probably a good idea to use tweezers to put these on, and they've ended up looking rather hooky. At the rear of the tank, there's a pair of nubs onto which the spare wheels will go. If you're building the M1441 or the self-propelled guns, you'll need to remove the one on the left. I make sure it's completely removed and the area it was in is nice and smooth. Then I glue on this doodad. I'm pretty sure this is a jack. There's nothing to guide this, but it's not too hard to figure out where it should go. On the other side where we left that nub intact, we can install spare road wheels. This is pretty simple. You glue the lower part on, and then glue the upper part on top of that. Simple as can be. I think it looks really good. I then add this thing. I have no idea what this is or what it does, other than go on the back of the tank here. I guess really that's about all I need to know. The part's on and that's what matters. I then install the track guards. These were delightfully easy to get into place. The sides of these have what appear to be mould lines running down them, which is what I thought it was initially, but it seems that they're meant to look like that. The engine deck comes next. This isn't too difficult to place, though it doesn't actually lock into place really. There's a fair bit of side to side play in it so you have to eyeball it to make sure that it's centred. A little extra glue on the inside to ensure a good bond, and it's in place. Next, I add this stowage box to the left side of the hull. There's a little slot for the mounting tab to go into. This does look a bit odd by itself, but it's shaped that way so that it conforms with the shape of the fighting compartment which will come later. I follow that with what is probably an exhaust muffler. Again, there's a slot for this to mount into, and I add a bit of extra glue at the other end to make sure that it stays there. This round doodad goes on next. I'm assuming that this is a radiator cap. There's nothing tricky about getting this on. I then add the same details, the stowage box and exhaust, to the right side of the tank. It's coming together nicely, but those two holes on the engine deck need to be filled in. So let's use these grills to do that, because, well, that's what we're supposed to do. There are two different styles of grill to choose from, and I wasn't paying enough attention at the time because I just chose the one I liked the look of better, but it is the correct part for the version of the tank I'm building. I guess I got lucky. Now nobody can be all like, Haha, stupid Herbert used the wrong grill. Whoa, lo, lo, what a ding dong. Next comes this nice rack of tools. This goes on the centre of the engine deck. It goes together nice and easily and it looks really good. Some of you might prefer to leave this off until painting, but I'm pretty confident that I can paint this with the parts installed. It's now time to build the fighting compartment. This isn't especially tricky to put together, though I would suggest taking your time with it and not rushing. That's probably good advice for just about anything, really. The wall parts are glued to the top part and there are guides on the backs of the walls that help you line everything up. A little bit of test fitting and plenty of glue, and as I said, taking your time, and the assembly is soon completed. I managed to minimise any gaps fairly well, though it's not totally perfect. Maybe we can use the fact that the tank is made of riveted plates as an excuse for the gaps. Or maybe we can use putty and fill in any gaps that shouldn't be there. I leave that assembly to bond for a bit, and then it's time to attach it to the hull. The fit here isn't quite as good as I would have liked, there are some gaps around the bottom of it, and there isn't really anything to guide it, so you'll have to be a bit careful with it. In the end though it's in place and it doesn't look too bad. Gaps can always be filled in later anyway, and the ones we do have certainly aren't the worst. 
You'll probably notice that I made a huge ugly gluey fingerprint mark on the side. No need to panic though, that can be fixed later as well. Onto the right of the roof part I glue this little thingamajig. I assume this is some kind of antenna mount. It fits nice and easily into its mounting hole and after a bit of nudging it's in place. The little step stirrup things that go on the side here come next. These weren't quite a perfect fit. I think I trimmed one of them a bit short and I think also the fighting compartment might be ever so slightly off centre. But they're on and they look okay. And of course there's one of these for either side of the tank. The final detail for the hull is these, I'm pretty sure they're lamps. These are meant to go into the little holes with the framey bit around them, but I'm not quite sure I've mounted them absolutely correctly. They look a little bit odd to me. Either way, they're on and now it's time to work on the turret. The first thing I did was actually notice that there was an instruction to drill some holes before gluing other bits on. First time for everything, right? So now we have two nice holes in the top of the turret. Onto the bottom part of the turret I glue the rear wall first, mostly because this had keying and that seemed like it would make things easier to line up. And as you can see, there isn't exactly a lot to guide the positioning of these. You have to eyeball the parts quite a bit and it's hard to get them to look good, but I did the best I could with it. This is undoubtedly the worst part of this kit and I don't think this is a very good design for building turrets. Good thing it doesn't seem all that common. I glue the roof on and carefully apply pressure to try and get everything into place neatly with as few gaps as possible. I was careful here because I'm pretty sure that if I press too hard on it, it would just collapse and fall apart. Like I said, it's not perfect, but it is together. I then assemble the gun. If I wasn't such a ding dong, I would have done this more in frame. This is pretty simple though. There's an internal matlet part with a backing part which can be glued onto the outer matlet. If you want you could put this together so the gun will elevate and depress but I prefer it to be solidly in place, so I glue it all together. I follow that by gluing the gun into place. It occurs to me that I might have accidentally clipped the mounting pin off the gun which would have made it easier to get into place but I still managed to get it installed. And it does look rather shooty. I rather like that the end of the gun barrel is slide moulded so there's no need for any drilling on my part. It really adds a lot to the look of the model. Into the two holes I drilled on top of the turret I glue this plate. Nothing too tricky about this. I then glue the hatch into place which consists of two parts. There isn't really anything to guide this. Well the opening for the hatch works as a guide but there's no keying. You'll just have to eyeball the fit and nudge the parts around until they look right. If you were to model this open the holes for the hinges would work as keying I guess. But obviously my turret is buttoned down. Then I glue this machine gun into place on top of the turret. It seemed like it would interfere with the hatch if it was facing forwards, so I mounted it sideways. That's probably fine and dandy. To finish the turret I glue the gun and mantlet assembly onto the front, and it doesn't quite slot into place. It very nearly didn't fit, but a bit of pressure and it goes into place. There's a bit of a gap on the right side, which isn't really surprising. At any rate the turret is now complete. It's not the best turret but it's together and really it could be a lot worse. It mounts onto the hull nice and easy using the simple locking tab. And that's the plastic M1441 Caro Armato in 28mm scale from Italery completed. And I have to say it's not too bad really, though the turret does let it down a bit. You won't really see that so much from a distance and if it does annoy you it's just a little bit of work with some putty and it should look a whole lot better. Ideally a bit more keying for the parts of the turret would have been a good idea. I kind of think that perhaps the turreted version of this tank was a bit of an afterthought in this kit. Maybe, maybe not, I'm obviously just guessing. And perhaps the Semoventi has its own problems. That version does have an interior though so maybe they put a bit more into that. I will eventually build that model when I get my hands on the bolt action boxing of this kit, though it won't really be a comparison as such because it's the same kit. And well, it is obviously quite a different vehicle. At any rate though, it will be nice to see how differently, if at all, the Semoventi version builds up. A comparison I will be able to do, when it arrives, is with the Rubicon Caro Amato kit. I have ordered it but at the time of recording it's not arrived yet. That Rubicon kit is actually an M1340 and I've built the M1441, but close enough. If you're interested in that stick around and keep an eye out for when I stream that build. It should be fairly soon.
Uh, back to the kit that this video is actually about. This build was rather enjoyable, for the most part. I didn't really like the turret wall assembly very much, but I have endured much worse, so I can't complain that much. Most of the parts went together with a minimum of fuss, though some obviously did lack keying or guides. I was still able to get the things into place more or less where they should be. It was also relatively quick to put together. I managed to do this in one stream of about three hours, which does involve quite a bit of derping about. It wouldn't be herba derp derp if I didn't derp about. So I would imagine that it could be built much quicker. But I would also suggest that you take your time, particularly with the turret, for what I think are obvious reasons. I don't plan on painting this anytime soon, but after somebody commented on it, I'm pretty tempted to paint this as captured by Australia. They didn't last all that long in Australian service, but with the big kangaroo marking on the side of it, I think it would be an interesting choice. Something a little bit different. That's for future Herbert to worry about though. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to put those in the comments section below. I hear it's pretty good for that. If you've built one of these or any other cool models and you'd like to share some pictures, why not drop by our Discord community and share? We would love to see what you've done. If you want to watch me build kits like this live on stream, head on over to my Twitch channel, the link to which is in the description below. And if you've not done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron if you'd like to see my videos a bit early, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch. Links to all of my things are in the description below, and as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thank you for watching. Farewell.